Federalist 66, Part 1, uh, Hamilton continues to defend the parts of the Constitution which gives the Senate to write the right to be the place where cases of impeachment are tried. As you remember from the last papers, we said the House of Representatives indicts says somebody is guilty, especially somebody that, specifically somebody that works for the government, and the trial goes to the Senate. So anti-federalists are saying, well, wait a minute. If the Senate is going to be where this case is going, the cases of impeachment are going to go to, Senate is going to act like a part of judiciary. Isn't this the violation of separations of power, which is something we've talked about? And Hamilton says, no, not such a thing. We talked about it in the last paper, and here is going to refer to some other uh, arguments in defense of the Constitution. Also, anti-federalists are saying that uh, the Senate is going to be an aristocratic body. And this is not what we had a revolution for. We did not want him to uh, get rid of the British aristocracy ruling over us and replace it with a new aristocracy. And Hamilton says, no such a thing. Because at the end of the day, when you look at uh, the situation, the House of Representatives, whose members are directly elected by the people, not just like not like the Senate, who the state legislatures elect the senators. But he says the House of Representatives, which is elected directly by the people, is extremely powerful, can stop Senate from acting aristocratic or blocking any bad intentions that the Senate might have. And uh, he talks about that, and he also... Uh, in this paper, talks about uh, uh, how this Senate, in conjunction with the executive, with the president, appoints ambassadors and members of the cabinet and important positions like that. And he also defends that. So let me just start reading it for you. Uh, in front of you, actually, is uh, a Oxford classics edition of the Federalist Papers. Uh, as you remember, I have uh, mentioned a few times that if you get a chance, uh, read the introduction to the different editions of the Federalist Papers. Uh, you will see different scholars commenting on these papers, uh, and it would be helpful to you see if you can. All right. I'll start at the very beginning, a review of the principal objections that have appeared against the proposed court for the trial of impeachments will not improbably eradicate the remains of any unfavorable impressions which may still exist in regard to this matter. The first of these objections is that the provision in question confounds legislative and judiciary authorities in the same body. Uh, confound here means combines. It's not the same uh, meaning. That, uh, it doesn't have the same meaning as it does today. So he says this is the criticism that our anti-federalists are making. They're saying it's combining the power of judiciary with the legislative of authority when you send impeachment trials to the Senate. Senate is supposed to be part of the legislative branch. Why are you uh, getting it to act like it's part of the judiciary? In violation of that important and well-established maxim, which requires a separation between the different departments of power. The true meaning of this maxim has been discussed and ascertained in another place, and has been shown to be entirely compatible 
with a partial intermixture of those departments for special purposes, preserving them in the main distinct and unconnected. So he says, we've already talked about this. We've already said that you cannot separate these branches 100%. That's actually not a good idea. So he says, we've already talked about that there should be part of their power that should overlap so that they can check and balance each other. This partial intermixture is even in some cases not only proper, but necessary to the mutual defense of the several members of the government against each other. An absolute or qualified negative in the executive upon the acts of the legislative body is admitted by the ablest adepts in political science to be an indefensible barrier against the encroachments of the latter upon the former. And it may perhaps with no less reason be contended that the powers relating to the impeachment to impeachment are as before intimated an essential check in the hands of that body upon the encroachments of the executive. The division of them between the two branches of the legislature, assigning to one the right of accusing, to the other the right of judging. He says this is we haven't given the whole power to the, in the hands of the Senate. The House has to indict, then the Senate acts like a trial court. Okay, The House has the right to accuse, but the other one judges, the Senate judges. Avoid the inconvenience of making the same persons, both accusers and judges, and guards against the danger of persecution from the prevalency, prevalency of factious spirit in either of those branches. As the concurrence of two-thirds of the Senate will be requisite to a condemnation, the security to innocence from this additional circumstance will be as complete as itself can desire. Plus, two-thirds of the Senate have to agree that somebody needs to be impeached. So that itself is a great security. You're just not going to find, it's not just 51% of the senators. It's two-thirds of the senators. And that raises the bar much higher. Next paragraph, it is curious to observe with what vehemence this part of the plan is assailed on the principle here taken notice of by men who profess to admire without exception, the Constitution of this state. While that Constitution makes the Senate, together with the Chancellor and judges of the Supreme Court, not only a court of impeachments, but the highest judicatory in the state in all causes, civil and criminal, the proportion in, points of, in point of numbers of the Chancellor and judges to the, to the Senators is so inconsiderable that the judiciary authority of New York in the last resort may, with truth, be said to reside in its Senate. He says, look at the state of New York, our own state, as these papers are written first in the state of New York. He says, even when you look at the constitution of our state, even though it says uh, members of the Supreme Court of the state plus a chancellor, plus the whole Senate of the state can sit as a trial court for impeachment. But when you look at, look at it, the number of Supreme Court justices of the state of New York and that chancellor are so small that it really acts like you don't even have them in the body of the Senate. So it says it's exactly like our own state's constitution so you people who are criticizing the federal constitution but love the state constitution, what have you got to say to that? If the plan of the convention be in this respect chargeable with a departure from the celebrated maxim, which has been so often mentioned and seems to be so little understood, how much more culpable must be the constitution of New York? 
Then Hamilton writes a note which says, in that of New Jersey, also the final judiciary authority is in a branch of the legislature in New Hampshire, Massachusetts, Pennsylvania, and South Carolina. One branch of the legislature is the court for trial of impeachments. So he says, look at the similarity. All these anti-federalists that are finding fault with the federal constitution, the plan that came out of the Philadelphia Convention, they are totally okay with their own state constitution, which is almost like the federal constitution. So he kind of tries to point to the hypocrisy. I think we'll have to continue in the next video.